Dev Call. A Dugmas Carol by Debs Wardle. Act Two. So, one spirit down, two spirits to go. Oh, if only you were talking shorts. Could murder tequila right now. Now, let's see. Who's up next? Listen, uh, Daisy, maybe we could do the other two some other time. I really did want to get caught up on these podcasts while on the train. Oh, hello. You must be the ghost of Partners Present. Ish. Oh, God, not you. Hi. Yes, I am. So lovely to meet you. I'm Doug's inner hopeless romantic. Hopeless. Exactly the quality you want in an existential guide. Wow, you certainly dress for the occasion. Oh, thanks. You like the clown costume? It's amazing. What's that massive stain on it, though? I'd forgotten about the stain. Oh, is it very noticeable? No, not at all. I mean, I noticed it, but I shouldn't imagine anyone else would. Are you sure? Hundred percent. I work in fashion, you see, so I, I tend to notice these things. Tell me, why are you wearing such a fabulous clown costume? <laughs> Guess you two never spoke about that night either. No, we never talked about my past. It's not healthy to live in the past. I was always saying that, wasn't I, Duxy? You're probably not going to like what we're doing here, then. You see, it's sort of like Scott Pilgrim. Oh, not this again. Don't worry, I know all about it, and I'm only too happy to help poor Duxy see the error of his ways. I only ever wanted to help him. There's a wonderful person in there just dying to get out. I've always known it. He just needs to get his behaviour under control, don't you think? Mm, that's not quite what I, I can't wait to start delving into some of our memories together. I think it's so fascinating to shine a spotlight on the past. I thought you said it wasn't healthy to live in the past. I never said that. You literally just said that. This is exactly the kind of behaviour I'm talking about. But You're totally trying to gaslight me. You need to sort it out, Duxie. It's not normal. I'm going back to my podcast. Let's get going, shall we? So, where are we this time, Doug? Doug? Doug! Take your earbuds out or I'll take them out for you. Oh, fine. We're in a hotel room. It was... Oh, I remember this. We'd not been seeing each other long. Our first night away together as a couple. Some event for one of your ghastly friends, wasn't it, Dugsy? I think Thankfully, it. we managed to escape fairly swiftly after dinner. And the rest of the night should have been really romantic. But Dugsy here... Well, I won't tell you. You'll see. Right. Not sure we needed quite that much exposition. But anyway... Here, come and lay down. Can I get you some water? Or how about a cup of tea? How are you feeling? What? Oh, yeah, ugh. I had to get out of there. I thought you said you had a headache. Well, I would have had if I'd had to stay and talk to them much longer. But you insisted we had to leave. They're my friends. I they... know they're your friends, Duxy, but what would you rather be doing right now? Reminiscing about your boring old uni days with your boring old uni mates or doing despicable things to me in this nice big king-size bed. Well, I guess when you put it like that... Hmm, thought so. <laughs> oh, for God's sake. Suppose I better answer that. No, I'll get it. Hello? Hi, yeah. It isn't working. Ah. Oh. It should be. Could you run it again, please? Thanks. What's happened? Oh, it's reception. They're saying my card isn't working. Hello? All OK now? Still no. They're saying it's not working. Can you get yours? I thought you wanted to pay for this evening. That's why we upgraded the room. Well, I tried to pay, didn't I? But they've rejected my card. Just go get yours, Duxy. Well, I've only just paid it off. It's taken me years. I know you have, so there'll definitely be enough money on it for the meal and the room, won't there? Deck, they just need the card. Just come get it. Jesus, I'll pay you back, okay? Yeah, okay. Sorry, it's fine. Tell him I'll bring it down in a minute. Give it to me, I'll read it over the phone. Uh, okay. Hi, sorry about that. You ready? 
Mm-hmm. It's 4327 6685 Expires 2026. All okay now? Fantastic. Thanks so much. Bye. Ugh. I bet it was their machine. Ah, well, all sorted now. So, where were we? Seriously? It's like that's all you want me for sometimes. Sorry, I thought you wanted... I think I'll go and check out the spa in the morning before we head home. Should be able to do that now they've managed to successfully write down some card details. I mean, they literally had one job. You have a nice time at dinner, babes? Yeah, it was good to see everyone again. Got to see a lot more of Sally than expected, eh? (laughs) Oh, come on. Don't look at me like that. She's put on loads of weight. I noticed it and I wasn't even looking at her particularly. I was talking to Dan most of the night. I thought he was being pretty flirty, actually. But either way, Dan seems really interested in my designs. Does he? That's great. Yeah. I was telling him all about the showcase. He said it sounded brilliant. Honestly, this time next year, everyone's going to be wearing my clothes. Oh, glad you were able to talk to him about it. He's got some useful contacts. And he's always really happy to help out his friends. He helped me get my first exhibition. Don't think I didn't see you, though. See me what? Flirting with that waitress. What waitress? What waitress? The blonde one? I wasn't flirting with her. Oh, are you calling me a liar now? No, but... So you were flirting with her. Why would I be flirting? You know the kind of pressure I'm under at the moment, but you still drag me out here to spend all this time and money with your friends. I deserve better than that, Doug. I told you that you didn't have to come. Oh, you'd have loved that, wouldn't you? Being alone for the night, except you wouldn't have been alone, would you? No, you'd have been here with old Blondie, wouldn't you? Getting up to all sorts while I'm sitting at home by myself. Where is this coming from? Of course I wouldn't. No, I do what it's like for me. You're the one person in the whole world I can trust, Doug. You know you can trust me. Then why don't you want me here? I do want you here. No, you were trying to persuade me to stay at home. Look, I just said you didn't have to come because I know how stressed you are with organising your showcase and you don't like hanging out with my friends. Oh, right. So, I'm not good enough for your fancy friends. Mm, I get it. That's not what I meant at all. Whatever. I'm going to bed. I wanted us to spend a nice night in a nice hotel room and you totally ruined it. Well done, Doug. Please, come on. Let's not go to sleep on an argument. I'm not the one who's arguing. Haven't raised my voice once. I'm really sorry. I didn't mean to upset you. I'm not upset, Doug. I promise I do want you here. And honestly, I wasn't flirting with that waitress. Flirt with whoever you want. I don't care. Just go to bed. Wow. I know, right? I'm still not quite sure what happened. Um, you got weird about helping me out with the payment when my card wouldn't work. You implied that you never want to be there in the first place. You spent all evening flirting. Take your pick. I wasn't flirting with the waitress. I barely spoke to her. Oh my god, and you're still lying about it. Tuxy, it's not like it even matters anymore. We broke up ages ago and I'm not even real. I'm a manifestation of your subconscious projection of what I might do or say based, based on, on the memories I have and how you acted when I knew you. Yes, I know. Thanks. You never would let me speak. Always interrupting. I don't think it was me who... You me feel so unheard, Duxy. I have a question. Yes, clown lady. How can I help? Did you pay Doug back? Pay Doug back for what? The money you put on his card. Oh, that? Oh, yes. Yes, absolutely. I can't remember when exactly, but I definitely would have done. Doug? No, my debt snowballed again. I'm still paying it off. Oh, come on. It was only a few hundred quid. How many hundred? With the dinner and drinks and the upgraded room and the spa treatments, it was over eight. Is that all? Even if I hadn't paid you back, which I'm pretty sure I did, you can't blame your financial problems on me. You're terrible with money, Dugsy. I was always telling you to be more careful. Like not allowing himself to be pressured into paying for expensive nights out? For example? Exactly. Wait, hang on. Were you given helpful advice on how to improve yourself often, Doug? Yeah, 
Apparently, there were a lot of ways in which I wasn't good enough. There were, which is a shame because if you just listened to me and tried a bit harder, maybe you could have been. Tried harder? Yeah, I mean, you saw what he was like, so impassive. Like, he didn't care for me at all. No, what I saw was you dragging Doug away from all his friends because you didn't want to be sociable. I was doing him a favour. His friends were awful. Then you bullying him into putting the entire night on his credit card when you'd promised you'd pay for it. Ah, that wasn't my fault. My card was declined. Then instead of being grateful that he'd come to the rescue, you accused him of plotting some sordid affair with the waitstaff. Getting your wallet out doesn't give you a free pass for infidelity. And finally, as if that wasn't enough, you twist his thoughtful suggestion that you might have preferred to stay at home. Like that was for my benefit. Into him rejecting you, so he would then have to reassure you that no, you were wanted. I wasn't feeling well. I had a headache. And how did you feel, Doug? At any point in this relationship, did you feel loved? No. Don't be silly, Dugsy. Of course you felt loved. I mostly felt like I was walking on eggshells. So melodramatic. You're making me out to be some kind of monster. Well, if the fangs fit. What's that supposed to mean? It just strikes me as odd that you wouldn't let him see his friends unchaperoned, then dragged him away at the earliest opportunity. It was almost as if you didn't want him having contact with anyone else. You wouldn't even let him talk to the hotel receptionist. That is utterly insane. Dugsy, are you hearing this? It's textbook stuff, really. Divide and conquer. Go on. You can tell me. You were doing it deliberately, weren't you? Absolutely not. Go on. You were. Admit it. For your factious purposes. (laughs) Now who's quoting Dickens? I will admit no such thing. I came here to help poor Dugsy not to be attacked and manipulated by some psycho who's dressed like a children's entertainer. Actually, you came here so Doug could put your relationship behind him and move on. Well, good luck with moving on from the best thing that ever happened to you, Doug. I know you miss me. Probably regret you ever let me go. So, how about it, Doug? You ready to be rid of it all? Be rid of? God, yes. All right, then. When you look back at the relationship now... What's the overriding feeling? Well, I... I was talking to Doug. Shame. I feel ashamed. Good. You ought to feel ashamed of yourself. I mean, just look at how you treated me. Constantly lying. All I ever wanted to do was help you, Dugsy. And you... Have I gone deaf? No. I hit mute. You can mute the spirits. I figured we'd be here all night otherwise. Oh, Dickens missed a trick there. You were saying? You feel ashamed? Yeah. Would you care to elaborate? Do I really? Oh, all right. It's shameful that I could have been so gullible. I just got sort of uh, sucked into all the madness. There's a difference between being trusting and being gullible, you know. You entered into a relationship in good faith, and it turned out not to be what you'd hoped it would be. No shame in that, is there? I guess not. Right then. Let's unmute this spirit and get them gone. Oh my god, did you just mute me? Yes. Now Doug has something he wants to say. Wants a strong word. And I will mute you again if you don't let him say it. Understood? Fine. Go on, Doug. I'm listening. I spend a year jumping through hoops trying to please you, but there were always going to be more hoops, weren't there? It was all so... Oopy. Oopy? What are you talking about, Doug? Honestly. My finger is on the mute button. Sorry, carry on. Tell me more about your hoops. Look, the bottom line is that it didn't matter how many hoops I jumped through, or what I did, or even who I was. It would never have been enough for you. And that wasn't my fault. And maybe it's not my shame to carry after all. So, I'm not going to carry it anymore. Honestly, what are you blabbering on about? If you ask me, which of course nobody is bothered to. Did you say you were together for a year? Yup. You must have been exhausted. (gasps) Um, I know you said there'd be three, but there hasn't been anybody since, so I guess it must have just been the two. Really appreciate you helping me get them out of my system, though. I'm sure that'll be much better. (laughs) Thanks. 
Well, as there's nothing further, I'll get back to my podcasts now. Nobody said this was linear, Doug. We're going back further for the next one. I can feel it. All tingly. Back further? No. No. No, please don't tell me we're going to... To the one we've both been waiting for, of course. Oh, no. Oh, God, no. This was an Evcon Entertainment Clockwork Digital Studios original production, a part of the On Another Wavelength audio anthology series, featuring the voice talents of Michelle Campbell-Jones, Holly Galanders, Mitch Howell, Chris Macari, and Georgie Montgomery. Written by Debs Wardle. Directed and produced by Simon James Collier. Series created and co-produced by Adam Deschanel. Soundscape design by Charlie Brahm.